Spider-Man Far From Home is an intense, game-changing movie that clocks in at over two hours long, but there are still some amazing deleted scenes cut from the final film, as well as a completely different alternate ending. yippee ki -yay, movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm revealing 16 deleted scenes, cancelled characters, and the ending to the movie you never got to see. I've got a new Marvel giveaway on this video, so subscribe, hit the bell, and let me know what you thought of Far From Home for a chance to win. Spoilers ahead, of course, so take care if you haven't seen it yet. The movie's writers Chris McKenna and Eric Summers have revealed there are deleted scenes with Happy Hogan, where he's stumbling through different descriptions and trying to come up with a term of his own for Peter's spider sense. In the final film, however, it's Aunt May who gets to name Peter's special power in the MCU. I thought that you could sense that with your Peter Tingle. The reason the writers chose Spidey's aunt to coin that particular phrase was to dial up the embarrassment factor for Peter. Do not start calling it my Peter Tingle. The worst thing for Peter is that May is all also told happy, and it looks like the term is gonna stick. You get the Peter Tingle back online. Before Peter left for his school trip to Europe, originally he had a long to-do list of things that ended up being cut from the movie. Did you get your passport? Peter Parker here to pick up a passport, please. Yeah. Many tooth please. Mm -hmm. Take down the Manfredi mob. Yeah, I did. And there's an awesome extended action scene of Peter taking down the Manfredi crime syndicate. <laughs> You gonna be the next Iron Man now? Well, no, I don't have time. I'm too busy doing your jobs. What? Oh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Look, keep up the good work because I am going on vacation. I love that guy. This deleted scene is a nice bit of street level action and feels similar to how Spidey took down the ATM criminals in Spider-Man Homecoming. The Manfredi crime family are prominent Spider-Man villains in the comics, and hardcore MCU fans may also recall that they appeared in the second season of Agent Carter, where Joseph Manfredi was the leader of a bigger crime syndicate called the Magia. Also on the to-do list that was cut from the movie was Peter getting the dual headphone adapter he wanted for watching movies together with MJ, as well as a European travel plug and toothpaste. For this he visited Del Mar's store, which previously featured in Homecoming. Planning a trip? Mm-hmm. Going to Europe. It's a school trip. Remember in Spidey's first solo film that Mr. Del Mar thought Spider-Man was fighting the Avengers when he saw him taking on some masked criminals. In fact, Del Mar's bodega was destroyed when the criminal's tech spun out of control during that fight. After the Delhi caught fire, Spidey jumped in to rescue Mr. Del Mar and his cat Murph. And you can see that moment referenced in the deleted scene in the newspaper cuttings that are up on the wall. Also chopped from the new movie was Peter going to collect his passport for his trip abroad. Peter Parker here to pick up a passport, please. That dialogue sounds like the writers were going for something along the lines of the well-known tongue twister Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now you might have noticed that this passport doesn't have any years on it either for Peter's year of birth or for the issue or expiration dates. The years may have simply been removed to avoid potentially giving away any spoilers for Endgame. However, Marvel did mess up the timeline in Spider-Man Homecoming, with an eight-year time jump which they had to retcon later when they released an official timeline for the MCU. So perhaps leaving out the dates is a little nod to that. By the way, there's a nice Easter egg in the day and month for Peter's birthday on the passport. The 10th of August 1962 was the date that Spider-Man debuted in Marvel Comics. Another deleted scene from Peter's trip preparations saw him selling all of his toys to raise enough money for the Black Dahlia necklace that he buys for MJ in Venice. The scene had Peter getting a little emotional because among the various toys he was selling were some vintage Star Wars action figures that were supposed to have originally belonged to Uncle Ben. The action figures appeared on the shelf in Peter's room in Homecoming, and there's one character, Lobot, which is a favourite of Marvel Studios' chief Kevin Feige, that Peter would have ended up keeping. Lobot is Lando Calrissian's administrator in Cloud City, and although he doesn't get any speaking lines in Empire Strikes Back, he does wear a distinctive-looking cybernetic headpiece, which enables him to communicate with the city's central computer. The irony of this deleted scene is that although, as we've known since Civil War, Peter Parker is a Star Wars fan... Hey guys! You ever seen that really old movie? Uh, Empire Strikes Back? Actor Tom Holland has admitted that he's not really into Star Wars himself, and hasn't even seen The Empire Strikes Back, so he doesn't really know who Lobot is. By the way, Peter scrabbling to get some money together to impress MJ with a gift in the MCU reminds me of how Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker took part in a wrestling match with the idea of buying a car to impress Mary Jane in Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man film. 
Far From Home's director John Watts and Tom Holland have both said all these deleted scenes in New York were cut because the intention was to get Peter and the other students to Europe as quickly as possible. These discarded scenes will be appearing as part of a Marvel one-shot, a bonus short film which will be on the movie's Blu-ray release. There's a moment in Far From Home where Nick Fury tranquilizes Ned with a dart in a scene that calls back to Captain America the Winter Soldier. Peter's been dodging Fury's phone call, so Fury's arrived in person to ask for Spidey's help. And as they leave the hotel room, there's an amusing clip that ended up getting cut. Is he gonna be okay like that? Might want to turn him over so he doesn't swallow his tongue. One location that Peter almost visited with his classmates on their European tour is New Asgard, which is where the surviving Asgardians settled after the events of Ragnarok, and where Thor and co were hanging out playing video games in Avengers Endgame. It could have been fun to see Peter Parker cross paths with Valkyrie, the new Queen of Asgard, and also check in with Meek and Korg for an update on Noob Master 69. The movie's mid credit scene was pretty amazing, with the surprise return of J.K. Simmons' J. Jonah Jameson as a conspiracy theorist commentator for the Daily Bugle website, offering up one of his typically prejudiced rants where he twists the truth about Spider-Man saying he's the real villain. Fans have been going crazy for this ending as it brings back one of the most popular characters and actors from the Sam Raimi trilogy. However, originally, an alternate ending was considered that could have brought Anthony Mackie's new Captain America in for a post credit scene or late on in the movie's third act. In an interview with ComicBook.com, Marvel Studios creative executive Eric Carroll said they discussed bringing in Falcon's Captain America at the end once Peter arced and he's sort of leading the team, and maybe he calls in a favour from Sam Wilson. However, this likely didn't happen because, as Kevin Feige has said, Far From Home is ultimately about Peter getting out of the shadow, not just of Tony, but of the Avengers in general. Are you going to step up or not? So, although Mackie's Captain America missed out on debuting in Far From Home, he'll be taking on Cap's mantle for the first time on his new Disney Plus series, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. You can learn more about why Steve chose Falcon to be his successor, and discover the future of Captain America in my other video. Other characters that could have appeared in Spider-Man's second solo movie are the villain Scorpion and the Vulture. Actor Michael Mando's introduction to the MCU as Mac Gargan was teased in Homecoming's mid credit scene, where he tried to find out Spidey's true identity. This? It's not on you? It's on our, uh, little spider friend? I've got some boys on the outside who would love to meet him. You know, take a picture, slice his throat, put his head in a dryer. And I heard a rumor. You know who he is. When asked by ComicBookMovie.com why Vulture and Scorpion weren't included in the sequel, John Watts said we never really found the right moment to do something like that. But they're both still out there, and as we move forward with these films, we're building out this rich world that we can continually draw from. Indeed, with Spider-Man's identity now exposed by Mysterio's leaked video, Mac Gargan's Scorpion is bound to take a very keen interest in Peter Parker, and he may try to get his friends on the outside to target Peter as he already threatened. Before the film came out, there was also talk that Norman Osborn might make an appearance, with rumours suggesting that he or Oscorp are the new buyers of the Avengers Tower. Although we do see Spidey swing by near the Avengers Tower, any indication of who may have bought the building has been cleverly hidden. However, when John Watts was asked about Norman Osborn, he explained that Osborn wasn't considered for this film in the end, but that he is still available for a future story. Jessica Drew, aka Spider-Woman, is another character that Marvel was reportedly considering to make her MCU debut in Far From Home. Apparently two actresses in particular were seriously considered for the role. First was Shailene Woodley, who played Mary Jane Watson in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 before her character was cut from that movie. And there was also Olivia Cook, who you may know from Ready Player One. Sources for the hashtag show suggested that Jessica Drew was going to be introduced as a Bond girl type international agent that Peter would meet on his trip to Europe. Given Spidey's incredible popularity, it's surprising that there still hasn't been a live-action incarnation of Spider-Woman, but hopefully that could change soon. One character that John Watts confirmed was considered for Spidey's sequel is Captain Britain. Clearly, Peter Parker's trip to London would have been a great opportunity for a potential cameo, especially after Avengers Endgame, where Peggy Carter's mention of Braddock hints at the existence of Captain Britain in the MCU. However, according to Watts, they just couldn't come up with a clever way of incorporating Captain Britain into the Far From Home script, and their attempts to do so ended up feeling like shoehorned-in references. 
A character that Homecoming neatly set up for future appearances was Miles Morales. When Donald Glover's The Prowler appeared in Spidey's first solo MCU movie, he mentioned his nephew Miles. However, Miles didn't appear in Far From Home primarily because the character had just had a high-profile introduction, albeit in animated form, in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Despite this, John Watts has said that Miles could still be introduced in a live-action movie further down the line. By the way, Tom Holland himself had a deleted cameo as another Peter Parker in Into the Spider-Verse. A couple more trailer scenes I spotted which weren't in the movie include this one of MJ and the newly in love couple Betty and Ned passing through customs. And there's an extended scene of Peter's encounter with the Italian customs officer which was trimmed down in the final movie. Questo? They're my pajamas. You know, pajamas. They're bigger because that's how I like them. Pyjamas, okay, that's fine. And when Hydro Man emerges from the Venice Canals to wreak destruction, it looks like this shot of Peter perched on the roof of a Venetian bridge was chopped from the film. The shot in the actual movie has Peter in a different position and wearing a purple carnival mask. So what do you think of any of these deleted scenes, and do you wish any had been included in the movie? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to enter the Spider-Man giveaway. Congratulations to the winner of my Toy Story 4 giveaway! Email me from my about page so I can send you the prize. And if you enjoyed this, do hit that thumbs up button and tap left to watch another Marvel video, or tap right for some more Spider-Man or other videos you're sure to like. Thanks for watching and see you next time! yippee ki movie lovers!